Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning, everybody. We're going to taste and see this morning how the Lord is in this place. everyone we're uh, we're lighting candles because worship has begun has it not <laughs> it's good to see you here today welcome to church at our savior's lutheran church in sioux falls south dakota we're so glad you're here with us today whether you are here with us in person or whether you're joining us out there wherever wherever you are and uh you know if we're here if you're here in person we have prepared a friendly video to remind us how to stay safe while we're here so why don't we watch that now? COVID-19 has changed so much of our lives, including how we worship. And even though the coronavirus hasn't gone away completely, we can carefully worship in person again. So welcome back to Our Saviors. Out of love and care for your neighbors, please follow these precautions. Wear a mask. Masks can slow the spread of the virus. Stay six feet away from others. Use hand sanitizer and wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds. We are living through extraordinary times, but the gifts of faith and community have kept us anchored when so much is changing. Together, we are finding a new way forward, connecting faith to everyday life. That's just what we try to do here is connect faith to everyday life. I think that is pretty fun, that video. I wonder what kind of animal your family would be. 
So uh, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, talk about it and put your answer in the comments. If you're here in person, here's what this means for us in practice. Now that you're here for worship, you don't have to go anywhere, though we do want to make sure you're sitting in a row by yourself or with your family group. Uh, because we're bringing out, we've already set the table for Holy Communion here, and, uh, and this means you don't have to move. You are right where you need to be for the whole worship service. We've prepared uh, our, the meal today in our sanitary kitchen, and um, we've set it out for you. But what I want you to think about is if you need bread without gluten, or if you need uh, grape juice rather than wine, we just want you to raise your hand, because we'll, our ushers will bring that to you now, and uh, we'll all give you another chance to think about that later in the service. More communion instructions later, especially if you haven't done this with us here before. Just uh, remember to sing today in your heart or with your body. You can dance it out. That's totally fine. You can offer liturgical responses throughout the worship service by mouthing the words. You don't need to use your voice to engage your body. Your body will know what you're doing when you mouth the words. So do that when you want to respond today. Uh, you can stand and sit. And we most important of all, breathe to remember that God has given you your body to worship. And that's what we're going to do here today. So now, please join me in our call to worship. In the beginning, before time, before people, before the world began, God was. Here and now, among us, beside us, enlisting the people of earth for, for the purposes of heaven, God is. In the future, when we have turned to dust and all we know has found its fulfillment, God will be. Not denying the world, but delighting in it. Not condemning the world, but redeeming it through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God was, God is, and God will be. For tomorrow, I'm trying to make it, make it heaven my home. I am a poor pilgrim, a poor pilgrim of soul. I invite you now to join us in our confession and forgiveness. 
In these days of pandemic and protest and election cycles and the burdens of emotions not easily carried, it is easy to turn inward. The instinct to protect one's interest is strongest when we feel surrounded by things that we cannot control. But our Lord, the one who claims us, the one who calls us to follow, the one who sends us out with promises that are certain and a vision that includes a place for everyone, invites us, invites you, come to me, you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And so we confess our sins. Dear Jesus, we hear your call to follow you, and at our best, when the way is easy and our burdens are light, we manage fairly well. But when life takes unexpected turns, when the future appears uncertain, when competing voices clamor for our attention and fears control our decisions, we often fail as your followers. We are silent when our neighbors suffer unjustly, and we ignore your commands when they feel inconvenient. We cause deeper suffering when our love for others is conditional. Forgive us, Lord, we are sorry. Followers of Jesus, beloved children of God, be assured that your Lord is gentle and humble in heart. God hears your confession and promises to carry your burdens. And in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. In this moment, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Let anyone with ears listen. Thanks be to God. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. You've, You've got, got pain. pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, He's a prison shaking savior if you got chains. He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know it just ain't right. When there's a better life. You got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe. If you can hear it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you can hear it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, you can hear it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom for saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom for saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, He's a chain breaker. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, in so many ways you show us each day what your kingdom is like. 
Help us to look for signs of your grace and faithfulness in the ordinariness of each new day and in the extraordinariness of your love all around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kids, it's time for Kid Talk. And now if you're in the room with us today, that means you just get to hang out right where you're at. Normally we'd have you come on up here, but we're doing things a little different right now. If you're at home, you can scooch a little closer to whatever you're watching us on. And, uh, and I want to I tell you what Jesus tells us about the kingdom of God today. We're talking about the kingdom of God all summer. And today we hear the kingdom of God, Jesus compared the kingdom of God to four different things. And two of these things are remarkable. One is a buried treasure. I mean, how cool is that? A buried treasure? The kingdom of heaven is like a buried treasure that you have to hunt for? Another is the kingdom of heaven is like a, like a, pearl, like a pearl hunter, a gem hunter who finds the greatest find of his whole life. Two amazing things. And if that was the only thing the kingdom of heaven was like, then we might think that the kingdom of heaven is, is fantastic and amazing and brilliant and out of reach. Not something for regular people to have. But then Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is also like two other things. One, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast and flour, stuff that we find in our cupboards at home, stuff that we use to make bread. And also like a mustard seed. I brought my jar of yellow mustard seed today, and I bet you might, maybe you have one of these in your cupboard at home too. Mine definitely came out of my cupboard. And I looked at the bottom, it says um, that it was best by April 5th of 2015. <laughs> we don't use a lot of mustard seed at my house, but I do have some in the cupboard. This is so common, so everyday, so normal, that you can buy it for a couple of dollars at the grocery store and then forget that it's in your pantry. <laughs> and this is also like the kingdom of heaven. Kids, this is what I want you to know. Everywhere you look, God has put reminders of what the kingdom of heaven is like. Everywhere you look, there is something that can teach you about God. At church, finding those things and recognizing them is easy because we have beautiful artwork, we have crosses, we have Holy Communion, we have all of these things that remind us about God. But at home, you might look around and just like look around and see what you see there. You might see your family, you might see your TV, you might see, you might just see the carpet. If you go into your kitchen, you might find silverware, or mustard seed, and you might wonder, how can these things teach us about the kingdom of God? Well, they can. All of them can. But then what do they have to say? Well, what Jesus does in giving us normal things that can teach us about the kingdom of God is that Jesus says, well, if you want to look for the kingdom of God in your life, you've got to have a little bit of creativity and a little bit of imagination. You have to ask, how can this thing teach me about God? How? What can a candle say about God? What can a napkin say about God? What can, what can a book say about God? And then you can talk to your family about it. And ask the question. Because that's when we see the kingdom of God. It's not when a great teacher gives us advice. It's not, when, it's not when we have a huge revelation. It's when we talk to people about the things around us. And we say, what does this have to do with God? And sometimes we don't know. Until we start to think about it. The whole point of this is that kids, you can look around wherever you are and see all of these things, and wonder what they have to do with God. And what they have to do with God is to remind you that God is very close to right where you are, wherever that is. So look around you today. Find your mustard seed. Find whatever else is close hand to hand, and ask your family. Talk about it as a family. Say, how is this like the kingdom of God? 
maybe you will be surprised at all of the ways God is bringing the kingdom of God closer to you. God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sights too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who, would, who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not be with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are, count, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. 
Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, may the promise of your kingdom be our hope and our strength for each new day. In a world that sometimes seems filled with uncertainties and questions, help us to trust in the power of your presence and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody here today, whether you're here in person or joining us via television or Facebook Live. I'm glad to have this time together with you today as we talk once again about the kingdom of heaven and what that kingdom of heaven means to each and every one of us. We are here today. We are sitting here. It's not a normal day. It's still kind of a strange time for us to be in. Things aren't the way that we're used to yet and still. Some days it seems like we're, we're getting, it's a little loud here, I think, this microphone. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Uh, some days it seems like we're getting closer to getting back to normal, though, and I'm looking forward to that day someday. But then again, other days it seems as if we have a long ways to go. You know, I, I hear the question asked to me time and time again, how long is this COVID stuff going to keep on going? Or, you know, when will things get back to normal? When will the world get back to normal again? As if the world ever really was normal. I wish I had the answers to those questions. I really do, because you know something? They're mine, too. I wonder the same things that you do. And, you know, life, well, it's, it's always had a bunch of questions like that. Sometimes... Those questions just don't have any easy answers to them. When things in life aren't so clear to me, I, I kind of go back to when I was a kid and I heard a saying that sticks to me, sticks with me to this day, and maybe you've heard it before too. It goes like this. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. You ever hear that one? I, I don't even remember who told me that the first time, but I've heard it time and time again through the years, and it's one of those sayings that reminds me of God's presence in all things. And even when the future looks a bit uncertain, we do know and we do trust in the one who holds the future in his hands. It is that presence of God with us each day that helps us walk through the uncertainties of life when they come along. God's presence with us, or more specifically, the, the kingdom of God in our world is what we have been remembering together again these past few weeks as we have been journeying through our summer series, the kingdom of heaven. And each week we have been reminded in our scripture lessons what it means to feel God's presence with us in the midst of our crazy world, sometimes filled with unanswered questions and uncertain tomorrows. We have been reminded that God's kingdom has come to us through the promises of Jesus Christ, and God's kingdom is a very real part of our world today. But again, like I said when we began our time together, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to know this? What does it really mean that the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom, is here with us. And why should that make a difference in your life? Ponder that with me for a few moments, if you would. Jesus says to us today, the kingdom of heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, like Justin talked about, which is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, is the greatest of all shrubs and becomes like a giant tree full of animals and that fills creation. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, well, it's like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up and then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. 
For the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, is like a fine pearl that a merchant finds and sold all that he had to buy it. Or the, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a net, a net thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, it, it, it's like all of these things. And then he asks his listeners when he's done, do you understand this? And they said, yes. Interesting, isn't it? They said, yes, they understood what Jesus was saying the kingdom of heaven is like. How about you? Do you understand what the kingdom of heaven is like? Well, we've been talking about it for some time together now, but what does all this talk of the kingdom of heaven really mean to you? It was an important topic to Jesus, to say the least. He talked about the kingdom of heaven throughout the Gospels time and time again. And he kept trying to help people understand what the kingdom of heaven was like. But did they really get it? And do we? Oh, you know, we have our idea. We have our ideas of what kingdoms are like. We've seen them come and go. We've read about them in our history books and some of you maybe have played those computer games where you create and rule over your own kingdom or perhaps you've watched that tv series and those movies where kingdoms fight to rule over each other there are many images of what kingdoms look like but what about the kingdom of heaven god's kingdom what makes God's kingdom different than all of the rest and what makes it a very real part of our world today? Well, first of all, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like anything the world has ever seen before. It's unlike anything we've ever known. The kingdom of heaven is created by God's hands. It's like that tiny mustard seed, the one the smallest of seeds that grows by the grace of God to be the greatest of all shrubs. And it grows by God's grace alone and by God's command. And think about that image of the seed with me for a moment. Think about the tiny seeds of this earth. God alone gives life to the seeds that we plant. Oh, we may plant them, we may water them, we may care for them the best that we can, but God alone makes the seed grow. There's nothing we can do to perform that miracle of life. Only God makes the seed grow. And the same is true of the kingdom of heaven. God alone gives life to the kingdom of heaven. God alone took a tiny baby, a son born to an unwed, scared young girl and brings to us and to our world and to you the kingdom of God. It's not a kingdom made of, of buildings and cities and factories and wealth. It's a kingdom made of flesh and bone and blood and tears and death and new life. A kingdom made through and of a son. It's a kingdom unlike anything this world has ever known. This kingdom of God that came to be part of our world so that we would have hope for each new day. This is the kingdom of God that began in a humble manger and grew to fill all of God's creation. In our world filled with unanswered questions and uncertain tomorrows, what difference does it make in your life to know that the kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven, had come to be with you now? Does it make a difference? in how you see each new day. The kingdom of heaven is the seed 
that God has planted in you, what difference does that make? Jesus also says that the kingdom of heaven is like a, a treasure found or a pearl found or a net that's filled with fish. And each one of these things, think about it, comes like a surprise, like a gift that we did not expect. But upon receiving it, our lives are changed and our hearts are filled with joy and excitement. The kingdom of heaven is like this, Jesus says, like a surprise gift given to you. Think about that. Have you ever received an, an amazing gift that you did not expect to receive in a million years? Or, or did you ever receive an amazing gift that you did not feel like you deserved at all? If you said no to these questions, then we probably have more to talk about later. But most of the rest of us, all of the rest of us would say yes to that question. We should say yes to that question, Jesus says, because the one amazing gift that all of us have received for sure that we did not expect, that we do not deserve, was the kingdom of heaven. It was like a treasure found in a field or a, a pearl of great price that was discovered. It was a gift from God given to you that we did not deserve, and yet it is ours. And here's another thing. It was given to everyone with no strings attached. It is a gift that only God could give. A gift of grace that none of us deserves, and yet it is ours. To know that God loves you that much, that you are given a gift from God so great, to be given the gift of the kingdom of God. Well, that's something for you to cling to each day with all of your might, even when and especially when the kingdoms of this world rage around us. To know that no matter what happens in life, no matter what we are going through, pandemics, political strife, hardships, or grief, in spite of all the unanswered questions and fears we have, we have God's promise. God's hope in the kingdom of heaven for us today. Child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. The kingdom of God is God's gift to you today, tomorrow, and forever. It is God's gift to you, a treasure you did not deserve the seed of God's grace that has been planted in you that God nurtures in you. The eternal promise of God's grace and love in you that is yours no matter what this world brings. In our world filled with uncertainties and fears, what difference does it make in your life? to know that the kingdom of God lives in you and is with you always. And it is the one thing that you can be certain of. What difference does it make believing this in your life? To the apostle Paul, the kingdom of God meant everything. It was his reassurance that he needed when the storms of life raged around him. It was his strength that he needed to proclaim the message of Christ and the hope that his words proclaim to us to this very day. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, Paul saw the kingdom of God around him in his world each day, and the power of the kingdom of God in Paul helped grow that mustard seed that was the church 
into the sign of the presence of the kingdom of heaven throughout the world today. What difference it made in Paul's life? What difference does it make in yours? In a world filled with unanswered questions, the kingdom of heaven with us always is the one thing that gives us hope for each new day. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. And thanks be to God for the gift of the kingdom of heaven in us. Amen. Set you rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captives hearts release the hurt the sick the Thank you, band. Thanks, Tim, for preaching a marvelous word this morning. 
Gathered near and far is the body of Christ. We confess our faith, and we do that using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which I invite you to uh, say silently in your heart along with me in this, in this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, as we enter a time of prayer, I invite you to assume a posture of prayer that is most familiar to you. Plant your feet on the ground. Feel the ground below you. Maybe you want to put your hands in the air or fold them and put them in your lap. Close your eyes. Rest as we pray. Holy Spirit, search our hearts. You do not see as people see. You are not fooled by the face we compose to hide our emotions, nor by the words we use to couch painful truths. You see the truth. And you always respond to us with love. You forgive us when you could judge, you advocate for us when you could accuse. You know the truth, and you always believe the best in us. But we do not believe the best in each other. We cannot ignore difference. We cannot forgive disagreement. We cling to disputes and amplify misunderstandings until dialogue is impossible. What's worse, some powers in this world even revel in this behavior. They want to see us divided. They wallow in disharmony, and they beg us to join them. Because we are so often bad with each other, we are poor at trusting you. So this day, we ask you to search our hearts. Teach us the truth you find there. Cleanse us with a rain shower of forgiveness so we can trust the kindness you scatter like seed. Plant this kindness in us to flower from our hearts and teach us to love as you do. Give us the eyes to notice the budding goodness in others and to nurture it like careful gardeners. As your love takes root in our hearts, give us courage to fight evil wherever we find it. Give us leaders so rooted in principle that they can stand against of popular opinion, so anchored in goodness that they boldly defy what is wrong and refuse what is corrupt. Make fruitful the methodical creative collaboration of scientists in every nation who fight against the viral enemy that attacks our bodies. Give us activists and prophets who stretch out their arms to point out the viral racism and ageism, the homophobia and transphobia, and all the social sins that infect our communities. Spread a sheltering canopy over us when we wilt from chronic trouble. Bless the sick, including Susan Kincaid, Chuck Rapp, Tammy Sandval, Tricia Severson, Stand close to those who grieve the dying, including Larry and Jackie Jacobson, upon the death of Jackie's brother-in-law, Bob Gednalski. Family of Mary Ann Hallberg, upon her death. Family of Jack Carlos, upon his death. Search our hearts, O oh God, because you know what we need. Help us to see each other as you see us, as people worthy of the highest dignity and the deepest love. Raise us up as people who freely give to one another as you have given to us. Search our hearts, O God, because we pray in your name. And all God's people say, Amen. Thanks for praying with me. It's true, many of us come to worship, to receive the gifts of prayer, to hear the words of the, of the Scripture, to hear the preaching for the day, to receive many gifts from God. 
These are gifts that heal the wounds of the week now past. They nourish our faith when doubt is so easy and when doubt so easily worms its way into our, the center of our lives. These gifts equip us to be God's people in the world. And that is just as God intends it to be. But worship is not just like a spiritual vending machine that gives us what we think we need because worship is also an opportunity for each of us to give something of ourselves through acts of devotion and love. It's a chance to demonstrate not only the depth of our love for God and for God's people, but also our intention to follow in the ways of our Lord Jesus. This is at the core of our offering time. So today, while music plays, give some thought for yourself to the way you offer all of yourself in support of God's work in the world. So how is it that you, as a follower of Jesus, are bringing the kingdom of heaven into this broken world? Where is God calling you to offer yourself, your time, your talents, your treasure, in new ways, in uncharted territories? How is God challenging you to find the godly in what you think is unremarkable and plain and every day about yourself? Each of these things help us hear the call to follow where the Spirit is leading. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you bless us in abundance. Your love for us and for all never ends. Your faithfulness is for all eternity. 
Teach us to be generous. Give us joy in our giving. Help us to be gracious in our living and strengthen us in our believing. We trust you and we love you. Amen. Well, my friends, it's now time for us to share the holy meal. And um, this is pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting for us to be able to share this with you. And um, let me tell you a little bit how we're going to do this this morning. At the end of each of your aisles, we have placed uh, the gifts of Holy Communion. And not now, but in a moment, I'm going to invite you to scooch over there to the plate that's closest to you and, uh, and take it, and you're going to serve uh, your family at, at the appropriate time. The easiest way to know what to do is just to follow my lead. So um, when, I, when I make a move for these, I'll tell you to do the same. Just follow my motions and you won't get lost, okay? The Lord is with us, so we lift up our hearts because it is right to give our thanks and praise. Today we have set the table for you at the end of each pew because there are many tables here today. But we share one meal prepared by the same hands in the same place, given with one spirit of love, broken with one blessing from God. The last evening Jesus dined with his friends, the last time they dipped their hands in the same dish, the last time they sat close enough to touch, that last time Jesus said, remember Remember this night. Remember, because we will never gather this way again. So, remember. That last night, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for it. He said, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. When they had eaten, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of your sins. After that night, Jesus was betrayed. After that night, Jesus died, and God gave him life again. When Jesus joined his friends once more, they had been changed by death, and Jesus had been changed by new life. They could not gather as they once had. But God had taught them how to dine in peace, even in the shadow of death. Today, my friends, we acknowledge that Holy Communion has always been dangerous because it has always brought us closer to death. But in these gifts we share, we hold God and we behold God. So I invite you now to take the gifts nearest to you. Take them in your hands. If you need bread without gluten, if you need grape juice instead of wine, now's a good time for you to raise your hand too and let the ushers know about that. Now, we're going to eat in just a moment. We're going to eat together. Hold on. I know you're getting excited, but hold on. Because we're going to bless these gifts together. Jesus, you promised to be with us regardless how long it takes us to return to your table. Holy Spirit, we ask you now, pour out your presence on these gifts of bread and wine and pour out your presence upon me. This is your body given for us. This is your blood shed upon us. This is the healing that satisfies and the forgiveness that never runs dry. And so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ, you have many helpers. I am one of them. Each of you say, I am one of them. You are Christ's helpers, each of you. Now, just as Christ has served us, so we share the gifts God has given. Go ahead and eat. Taste and see, my friends, that God is good. Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit has made us new. Still, we know that our unity around the table is not reflected in our broken world. This table's open. This table is prepared for all, but not everyone has gathered here with us today. Those who are not here, we long to be with you. Those who have died, we know you are free. While we await resurrection, 
Christ's love still searches for the lost. Today you serve those with whom you feel safe. But Christ's love holds healing for every household, and the Spirit brings grace to every place. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near to you, and now we prepare ourselves to go out to share these gifts with the world. A couple announcements before we do that. Right now, many of you are staying at home to keep your body safe. That's good. Many of you are limiting contact with the outside world so you can protect the people you serve in your job. But if you've been looking for a chance to serve, especially to serve people who are the hungriest in our community, including many who cannot choose to work from home and you want to serve them safely, I have a couple of ways for you to do that. First, our church will serve breakfast at, to the working poor down at the banquet on August 5th. They're serving all their meals away from clients. We just need people to prepare the meal in the sanitary environment of their kitchen. If you're interested, reach out to the church office today <laughs> or by tomorrow, Monday, July 27th, so that you can help out on August 5th. We need to let them know how many people we have so that they can uh, fill in the gaps. First, um, oh, second in August, we're going to resume two other feeding ministries. First is Food to You, the mobile food pantry that serves people right where they live. We'll pack food for Food to You on August 20th. Also, in just a few short weeks, we will reopen our campus cupboard for Augustana University students as they return for classes. Campus cupboard has served students all summer long, students who've been on campus, but soon we're going to welcome the rest of the Augie community as they return to campus. Each of these events will be held in the safest way possible to minimize contact and implement our strict safety standards. So if you're feeling like you want to do something to help someone right now, this is a really good way to step up. Lastly, at noon today, we're having an in-person congregational meeting. It's our semi-annual meeting where we vote to approve our ministry plan, also known as a budget. We need 75 people here to make it legal. And, um, you know, so come and help us out with that. We uh, can easily seat over 100 in our gathering place responsibly distanced, so we do have a place for you to join us today. If you're here in person, consider coming back later. If you're not, there's still time to skedaddle here to join us and make your masked vote count. Now may God who gives seed to the sower and corn to the reaper give each of us what we need to produce a good harvest. Receive this blessing as we go. May God make us fertile in faith, love, and goodness. Take us out with joy and lead us on in peace as signs of the fruitfulness of heaven. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.